My name is Lucian de Dalla. I teach political science at the Danubius University in Galați as well as at the Alexandru Ioan Cuza University in Iași. The title of my contribution is Former European Commissioners as President or Prime Ministers, the Promise of Competent Governance. The interplay between the national and EU levels of governance has been a major topic of research in the field of European integration, especially after the Maastricht Treaty and the emergence of the European Parliament as a relevant legislative body. For its part, the Commission has become a more politicized body itself, as EU decision makers have repeatedly expressed the need for democratic accountability and for a stronger presence of the EU-wide political parties within the executive branch of EU governance. Although a member does not represent his or her country in the European Commission and must not show any national bias, the nomination can be an important political issue at the domestic level. The national public opinion is aware of the responsibilities and prestige associated with this office and expects the Commissioner to show competence and integrity. While the Commissioner's activity is not intensely followed, a successful term in office can be an important asset for a career in national politics. In this contribution, the research interest focuses on former European Commissioners that were elected or appointed as heads of state or government after the completion of their term in Brussels. The main argument is that EU-level experience played an important part in their subsequent career in national politics. The main conclusion is that the former EU Commissioner is seen as a political personality that is capable of providing competent leadership, especially if the citizens have a low level of trust in the prominent members of the national political establishment. The theoretical approach is based on the politicization of the European Commission as part of a drive to make EU institutions more democratically accountable. For instance, Vivian Schmidt argues that at the EU level we have moved from policy without politics to politics with policy. Simon Hicks, for his part, argues in favor of a need for a more clear-cut majority-minority dynamics in the EU institutions. Since the rise of the deficit narrative at the beginning of the 1990s, the European Parliament in particular has gained considerable powers and influence in the EU policy-making process. The European Parliament has become a far more demanding partner and rival for the Commission, and this has contributed to the design of a more politically accountable Commission. Martin Westlake, for instance, stresses the need for a link between the preferences expressed by citizens and in the European elections and the composition and program of the College of Commissioners for the par parliamentary term. The discussion about the ascendance of technocracy at the national level has often gone hand in hand with doubts about the solidity of democracy and its ability to face the problems of the day. Depending on the point of view, technocracy has been alternatively seen as a positive or as a negative response to a frail democracy. As Jürgen Habermas underlined, technocratic strategies offer an element of expert scientific legitimation, not as a complement, but as an alternative to open and public political deliberation. On the other hand, Pierre Zanvalon, among others, stresses the complementarity and sometimes positive role of technocracy for democratic legitimation. At the national level, for political parties or coalitions, the best solutions may sometimes be a leader that is credited with technical and administrative expertise, but does not have the vulnerabilities associated with career politicians. My case studies uh, include former commissioners that became uh, heads of national executives after winning direct presidential elections or explicitly leading their parties or coalitions in legislative elections, Dalia Gribauskaite in Lithuania, Romano Prodi in Italy, and former commissioners that were appointed as heads of governments in times of crisis, Mario Monti in Italy, Dacian Cholos in Romania. Romano Prodi was a technocrat able to unite the Italian center-left and promise competent government. He had won the 1996 Italian legislative elections after successfully building a center-left alliance, the Olive Tree, relying on his reputation of a competent minister and administrator. 
He was appointed president of the European Commission in 1999 after the Santer Commission crisis. Um, afterwards, Romano Prodi won another round of national elections in 2006 as head of the center-left alliance, the Union, a position that was obtained following inter internal primary elections. Dalia Gribauskaite in Lithuania was a party-backed independent candidate in times of crisis. She had served as a high official, then as an independent finance minister in the Lithuanian government. Afterwards, she was appointed as European Commissioner for Education, Culture, Multilingualism and Youth between May and November 2004, and finally as a Commissioner for Financial Programming and the Budget uh, 2004 to 2009. She ran for the presidency in 2009, supported by the main center-right party, Sayudis, and convincingly won in the first round. She gained another term in office in 2014. Her popularity was closely connected to the need for a competent response to the 2008-2009 financial crisis and its aftermath. Former commissioners that were appointed to lead crisis cabinets uh, include Mario Monti, um, who was the uh, Italian commissioner in the Prodi Commission and who was called to form a cabinet in November 2011 after the resignation of the Berlusconi government amidst the challenges of the European sovereign debt crisis. Mario Monti had to take tough austerity measures and he remained in office until the subsequent legislative elections, which he contested as head of a centrist party he himself created, the, Ch the Civic Choice, coming forth in terms of votes and parliamentary representation. Dacian Cholos was a former independent technocratic minister in a political cabinet and was later selected as commissioner for agriculture in the second Barroso Commission in 2009. Shortly after ending his term in Brussels, he was appointed as Romanian Prime Minister, heading a technocratic cabinet during the political crisis sparked by the deadly fire at the Collective Music Club. He was selected due to his perceived neutrality and to the prestige brought about by his term in the European Commission. Later, Dacian Cholos became head and then co-president of a centrist party pursuing a political career at the EU level and possibly at the national level as well. Um, in conclusion, the four ex-commissioners were solutions in times of crisis. Romano Prodi, uh, whose second bid for the office of the Prime Minister came after an internal crisis uh, in the centre-left, is, from this perspective, uh, an exception. For all of them, technocratic expertise was a major asset. In the case of Dalia Gribauskaite and particularly Mario Monti, their perceived experience and expertise were highlighted against the background of the financial and economic crisis. Thank you.